Hey eighth graders, welcome back to our new little modified block schedule. Um, I hope it goes well for you guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, today's assignment is lesson 3.1 and 3.2, thermal energy. And your learning targets are I can model thermal energy and I can differentiate between thermal energy and temperature. So really, those are going to be our two big concepts today, looking at how is what is temperature and how is it different than thermal energy. So we're going to in introduce this new concept of thermal energy um, just here in a second. All right, so part one for you guys today is open up your OneNote and add thermal energy into your vocab page. So early in this unit, you guys got the vocab and the key concept that both talked about temperature. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of an object. So if we look at an object and we look at all the little molecules inside of that object moving around, each one of those molecules has its own kinetic energy, okay? Temperature is the average of those. So we add up all those kinetic energies and then we divide through by however many molecules we had. Okay, and we should get one number that represents the kinetic energy of all those molecules. Thermal energy, on the other hand, is gonna be the total kinetic energy. So if we were to just add up all those kinetic energies of each of those molecules and stop right there, that's our thermal energy. Okay, so therm thermal energy is the total kinetic energy of all the molecules that make up a sample. So make sure you guys go in and add that to your OneNote in your vocab page. And then also add key concepts eight, nine, and 10. And I'm gonna kind of revisit these key concepts at the end of this lesson as well. But key concept eight says for objects at the same temperature, so if two objects are both 80 degrees. So for objects at the same temperature, the object with more molecules has more total kinetic energy than the object with fewer molecules. So again, if we're looking at thermal energy being all those molecules, uh, kinetic energies added up, then obviously the one that has more molecules, okay, are gonna have is gonna have a higher thermal energy or a higher higher total thermal or excuse me kinetic energy. All right, number nine at equilibrium, the average kinetic energy or the temperature of the molecules in the system is the total kinetic energy evenly divided by the number of molecules in the system. So this is kind of just a concept that tells us about our math equation. How do we find the average? Well, we add them all up all the molecules and all their kinetic energies, we add all of those kinetic energies up for all the molecules, that's our thermal energy. Then if we divide through by the number of molecules, right there, that's gonna give us our temperature or average. Okay, and then finally, key concept 10, when an object gains or loses energy, so if it's giving it to someone else or if it's the cooler object and it's getting energy from something else, the energy gained or lost is divided among all the molecules of a thing. So again, if I hold an ice cube in my hand, I am losing heat. Remember that, if you guys remember those little energy cubes, which we'll look at again today, anytime you guys were transferring, you were always moving those little energy cubes from the hotter object to the cooler object. So if I'm holding an ice cube, my hotter object is my hand here. So it's transferring energy into that ice cube, okay? If we were to take all the little water molecules in that ice cube, we're gonna evenly distribute one. So you get one, you get one, you get one until all those molecules have about the same average kinetic energy. All right, moving on, that was kind of lengthy. Your warm up today has two questions. So you guys have this image here where you have a cup of tea. It's very small. It is 80 degrees Celsius. So that's about 20 degrees uh, Celsius below boiling. Okay, remember water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And then you have a large bathtub of warm water, which is 40 degrees Celsius. Um, 40 degrees Celsius is about three degrees Celsius over body temperature. So body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius. All right, so comparing this hot cup of small coffee, or excuse me, tea, to this large warm bathtub of water, which do you think has the greater average kinetic energy? Remember that relates to our temperature. Okay, the molecules of the water in the teacup, the molecules of the water in the bathtub, or you're not quite sure. For this one, I want you guys to go to your draw tool. Make sure you pick a color that I'll be able to see. And I want you guys to circle which answer you think is correct. Okay, anytime you use the draw tool, make sure you guys click back on your cursor. One thing I also want to point out to you guys, just as a reminder, is anywhere where you guys see these question marks, I kind of make them obvious. You guys have something to do on that slide. So if you've gone through a slide and you see that question mark and you haven't done anything on it, you're missing something. There's something there you need to do. So make sure you guys read carefully and check everything out. All right, same example here. We got the small hot teacup uh, and then we got the large warm bathtub. Which do you think has the greater total kinetic energy? So think about those key concepts that we just went over. 
uh, and, the, and the definition for thermal energy. So again, use your draw tool here to circle either the molecules in the teacup, the molecules in the bathtub, or you're not quite sure. We will revisit this later. All right, moving on. Part three, you guys are gonna be doing a little modeling activity, both in part three and in part four. Part three, you guys have three trials you are gonna look at. So comparing objects of a different size, your goal is to demonstrate the difference between average kinetic energy, total kinetic energy, and temperature. So remember that average kinetic energy is your temperature, your total kinetic energy is your thermal energy, okay? All right, reminders, object A has six molecules and object B has two molecules. It's gonna look like this, okay? You guys you should recognize this, except now we don't have two objects that are the same size. We now have object A that is larger and has six molecules. Object B is much smaller and only has two molecules, okay? All right, each cube represents one kilojoule of kinetic energy. So remember, you have those little yellow squares or those little yellow energy cubes, as we'll call them. One of those represent one kilojoule of energy. So you have three trials. For each trial, set up your molecules with the average kinetic energy indicated in your energy cube model data table. So you guys will see that on the next slide. Be sure to use all 32 of your cubes. Fill in the total thermal energy for both objects. So remember your total thermal energy is all of your kinetic energy for that object added up. In the last column, select the statement that is true. All right, so let's take a look at this graph. I'm gonna do example one for you guys, and then I'll let you guys go to trial two and trial three on your own. So here's your guys' data table. You see object A is larger as six molecules, object B smaller has two molecules, and then each of those have an average kinetic energy of four kilojoules. So if we look at all the molecules, all six of them in object A, each of those should have four yellow cubes. Okay, they have an average kinetic energy of four kilojoules. So I've gone ahead and set this up for you guys already. So I've already distributed those 32 cubes to your guys' objects. So again, object A has four kilojoules on average. So each one of these molecules has four. Okay, same with object B, it also has four kilojoules, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So each of those molecules has four. So if we're looking at the amount of kinetic energy for each molecule, four is a good representative number. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do on that is we're gonna assume that these objects have just moved together and they haven't quite begun to transfer their energy yet. So what we're gonna need to fill out first in this little table right here is the total kinetic energy of our images. So total kinetic energy is what we refer to as thermal energy. So remember for this one, we count. Okay, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. So for object A, our total kinetic energy is 24 kilojoules, okay? On the other hand, object B has four, eight. So eight kilojoules. So notice this kind of goes back to our uh, key concept number eight for things at the same temperature. Okay, those things each had the same temperature. Each of those had an average kinetic energy of four kilojoules. So for things at the same temperature, the, the object with more molecules, which in this case was object A, has more total kinetic energy than the object with fewer molecules. So again, if we look at our kinetic energy here, object A had more molecules, six, and it had a higher kilojoules or a higher thermal energy or a higher total kinetic energy, however you guys wanna say it than object B that only had two molecules. All right, so again, we're gonna assume that we just pushed these two objects together and they haven't quite begun to transfer energy yet. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. We've got this last little column here and you guys will use your draw tool to select an answer out of that. You guys can circle the whole answer or you guys can check the little check box really well just as long as I can see what you guys did. So what is the state of the system? So if we just moved those in and we haven't quite had energy transfer yet, is the system at equilibrium because the objects are at the same temperature? Uh, is the system not at equilibrium because object A is colder than object B? Or is the system not at equilibrium because object B is colder than object A? So if you guys look at this, this one, each of these objects have the same temperature. So object A is at equilibrium. When we push these two together, there will be no energy transfer in between these two objects at all because all of these molecules already all have four kilojoules of energy, so they can't even it out, okay? All right, let me go ahead and erase that. So you guys should have, again, this checked that the system is at equilibrium because the objects are the same, okay? All right, 
Moving on, you guys will do trial two and trial three, so you guys will need to set these ones up on your own. If you guys look, I have your own little um, model right below, excuse me, that you guys will be able to move the yellow cubes around. So here's part three, trial two. Your guys' is object A, each of those has three kilojoules of energy. Okay, so each of the six molecules in object A has three. And since object B only has two molecules, each of those have seven. So you guys will go to your next one, trial two model. Each of these will have three. And each of these will have seven. So go ahead and set it up. Tell me what the thermal energy is for each of them. And then tell me, is this at equilibrium or not? So you guys can look and say, all right, which one's colder based on their average temperature? Okay, which one's hotter, colder, or are they the same? Okay, and then finally, trial three. You guys are setting it up where object A, each of the molecules, each of the six molecules in object A have five kilojoules of energy, and then in object B, one kilojoule of energy. Count out their thermal energies for me, and then tell me if it's at equilibrium or not. Okay, so here's your model for that one. All right, moving on to part four. So demonstrate what happens when a warmer object comes into contact with a colder, colder object. So we're just kind of adding on to what we just did, and we're going to actually go ahead and do our thermal energy transfers, our energy transfers. So object A has six molecules, object B has two. Uh, you guys are going to transfer energy uh, between the molecules of the two objects, and then remember that the little yellow cubes each represent one kilojoule of kinetic energy. So what happens when a warmer object comes into contact with a colder object? So again, you guys can think of it this way. If you have an ice cube sitting on your hand, your hand is the warmer object, your ice cube is the, is the colder object. So when we set them in, what happens? Which way does the energy transfer there? Okay, so set up your energy cubes according to the starting kinetic energy numbers indicated in the data table for part two, trial one. Make sure to use all 32 of your energy cubes. Imagine that object A and object B have been pushed into contact and then go ahead and transfer your kinetic energy until the system is at equilibrium. Remember, equilibrium is where each of the molecules in those two objects all have the same average kinetic energy or as close as possible. With your partner, complete the last two columns of the data table on your paper. Obviously, you guys are doing this by yourself. So let's go take a look. We have this set up just the same where you guys have this data table ready for you. I've given you both your starting average kinetic energy. So that's what you guys started off with, similar to the last one. I think these are the same numbers for trial three as well. So if you guys want to go up and use that same model as trial three, you're more than welcome to. Okay, and then uh, starting total kinetic energy, you guys will see that over the six molecules, each of them have five kilojoules, so that's a total thermal energy of 30 kilojoules. And you have two molecules in object B, each with one kilojoule of energy, so that's a total of two kilojoules for the thermal energy or the total energy there. All right, so set that up. Imagine they're pushed together, and then go ahead and move those around so you guys can see what happens to your transfer of energy. So after you've transferred and they're all evenly distributed, how many of those little yellow cubes does each molecule have an object A and object B. So count just one molecule, how many yellow cubes are there. That's gonna be your guys' final average kinetic energy. And then you guys will count up, all right, in object A there were six molecules, how many little yellow cubes are in each of those six. So count them up, get the total here. And same with B, there's two molecules. If one has four and the other one has four, how many are left here, okay? All right, for this one you guys are gonna set it up, part, excuse me, part four, trial two where each of your six molecules in object A is one kilojoule of uh, kinetic energy, so each molecule has one, and then your two molecules in object B each have 13. Okay, so you can see there are starting thermal energy, distribute them around, pay attention to which way you guys are moving them, are you guys moving them from the hotter object to the colder object, and then how can you tell which one's hotter and which one's colder? You guys can kind of refer back to your average kinetic energy, which we remember now is our temperature. Okay, moving on, part five is your simulation. You guys need a sim uh, to open your sim link here, so right click and open up, and you guys should be in your sim right here. Okay, so open the sim, use the features of the sim to set up samples as mentioned above, and then take the screenshot of the sim. So on this side, you guys notice that there's not really a question to answer, but there is a big question mark. Okay, that's because you need to snip and or screenshot, copy and paste your image of your setup here from your simulation. Okay, at this point, uh, you guys should all know how to do that. If you guys have something other than a Chromebook, you guys can search for your snipping tool, click, drag, and then copy and paste your image here. Uh, if you guys are using a Chromebook, you guys can hold down Control and then Shift and then 
press the little box key above the number six, and then you guys can click and drag, copy and paste just the same. Okay, you guys should be able to see your image pop up in the lower right hand corner, hit copy to clipboard, and then control V pastes. All right, so in your sim, you guys are going to set it up that you guys have a cooler sample that has more total kinetic energy, so a higher thermal energy um, than a warmer sample. So I'm just gonna show you guys what you're looking for in this. I'm not actually gonna do this correctly for you guys. So you're gonna have two samples. You guys will choose what size you do. That's up to you and that is key to this. So you guys really need to think about which size is appropriate to make this happen. You guys will be looking right here at thermal energy. So remember this is our total kinetic energy for all the molecules in that sample. And temperature, okay? So these two here, so you want a cooler sample so this number should be lower than this number, but this number, your thermal energy should be higher than this number. So how are you guys gonna manipulate these samples? Obviously you want one sample to be cooler and one sample to be hotter, okay? So you again want your cooler sample. See, this one's cooler than this one. So we want our cooler sample to have a higher thermal energy, in this case it's really low, so you guys have to again go figure that out, what you need to do to make this number larger than this number, but to have this be colder than this, okay? So once you guys figure that out, take a screenshot where it should look something like this, where I can see your guys' sample temperatures. So it should look something like this, where I can see your guys' thermal energy, I can see sample A, B, I can see kind of the kinetic energy of your guys' samples. And paste that in right here. Okay? Then you guys will go back and collect some data from that. So, what was your sample size? Did you do small, medium, or large? So, was your colder one small, medium, or large? Your warmer one small, medium, or large? What was your temperature? Again, you guys can get that right from here temperature. And then, what was your total uh, thermal energy or your total kinetic energy? And again, that comes from right here. Okay? And again, you guys should have your colder sample has a lower temperature, but it has the higher number for the thermal energy right here. Okay, and then how did you set up the sim in order to take a screenshot described in the mission? So tell me about it. And then could you change your sample so that they both have the same amount of total kinetic energy? So how could you guys change your samples to do that? Okay, test it out, see if you guys can. Finally, let's revisit our uh, warm up. So you again had this very small cup of tea that was about 80 degrees Celsius and a large bathtub that was about 40 degrees Celsius. Right below you guys will see these little images that represent the molecules in this teacup. Obviously there's more than six. And the molecules in this bathroom, obviously there's more than 15, okay? But these are gonna be your representations for this. First one, what is the total kinetic energy? So remember total kinetic energy, you're just adding them up of the molecules in diagram one. So there you go, you guys can add them up if you really need. Here's a calculator, you can right click and open that up. And then your next question asks you guys, what is the average kinetic energy? So it looks like you guys have 15 molecules here. So take your total, divide it by 15, and you guys should get your average there. One decimal point is good enough. Okay, remember your average kinetic energy relates to your temperature, and your total kinetic energy relates to your thermal energy. Finally, what is the total kinetic energy of the molecules in diagram two? So that was our teacup. Add them all up. And then for the average, divide through by the number of molecules, when this, in which in this case is six. Okay, finally, I want you guys to use your draw tool to circle your answers here. The water in the teacup has either higher, lower, or the same average kinetic energy. So circle one of those, compared with the water in the bathtub. However, the water in the bathtub has either greater, lower, or the same amount of total kinetic energy because it has more molecules, fewer molecules, or molecules with more energy, or molecules with less energy. So you're gonna circle one of those five options, one of these three options, and one of these three options. Okay, so there should be three circles in this whole thing all together, okay? All right, so make sure you guys finish that, and then you guys can move on to your wrap up. Do you have any questions? Circle yes or no. If you have questions, type them below. But obviously, if this is something that is tripping you guys up and you can't finish, make sure you guys let me know in advance so I can help you. And then 4321, how do you think you did? You guys are all done. I hope you're having a wonderful day and adjusting well to the block schedule. And I'm happy to see some of your guys' faces in class this week. Have a great day. Bye.